All right, ladies and gentlemen, puppies and babies, welcome to Crystal Ballin. This is episode one, 49ers at Steelers week. We've all been looking forward to this. I'm so excited. Uh, the beautiful sport of football is finally back in our lives. We have football actually tomorrow night, which is amazing. For me, it's going to be a very early morning. I live in Italy. I'm not sure if anybody knows that. I talk about it all the time. So um, this is your girl, Chrissy. I actually... It's short for Crystal. I don't really go by Crystal, but everybody sees that on social media now. Um, I'm going to be in your ears, all things audio coming soon to Spotify, Apple, iTunes, all that jazz. And yeah, we're going to get that going pretty soon. So you are watching and listening to Crystal Ball on the most epic pod. We'll break down all of the 49er schedule, basically. We're going to bring in a different uh, analyst every week that will be discussing the opposing matchup so this week i've got an amazing guest uh, we're going to talk some few a few spicy fantasy football starts and sits for the week as well just because each of my guests is going to be somebody who is in the fantasy football community which i'm so excited about i haven't done this before now in no way am i an expert so i'm going to be you know teasing and, and picking their brains and seeing what they know about their matchups but maybe even a little bit of beyond that as well. So my first guest works for the legendary Matthew Berry as an illustrator and a graphic designer at Fantasy Life. She's an amazing artist. She's somebody I truly look up to as well in the fo fantasy football community. And I'm honored and humbled to have her as my very first guest on the show. So everybody give a mini cheer to the lovely Sam Holt. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for that amazing intro, Christy. I really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks so much for joining me. So how are you doing today, Sam? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk some Steelers Niners football. It's not a, really a sentence I get to say much. We don't play each other very often, do we? No, we don't. And no, this is, be fun. it's, it's obviously a big game for both of us. Um, first game of the season. Of course, I'm excited. How was your off season or have, are you all prepared and ready for the season to go? I mean, I'm as prepared as I can be. You know, I've uh, I did a draft, I think, today even. I mean, it's still trying to finish up some of these last drafts. I'm trying to keep my my leagues under 10. That's the goal for the season. We're sitting at eight. So nice. we're, we're cutting it close, but, you know, definitely doing well. Um, and yeah, just as prepped as I can be. You know what? I get to this point where I've done so many drafts that I it's not that I get tired of it, but it's just that I just want the season to start so badly yeah. that it's like, OK, can we just get to the next thing so I can actually see if all of the takes and all of the bets that I'm making come to fruition and I just want to see what my team actually looks like because you can draft them but once we start then we know what we're gonna get exactly I know I'm in the same boat I think I'm I'm up like nine or ten leagues that I'm in already and it's just overwhelming but yeah let's get going um I just want to see how these guys pan out how they play on the field obviously I have Kelsey in a couple leagues not happy about what I saw about him <gasps> but sweating it I'm sweating it <laughs> Okay, I'm still optimistic. <laughs> Anyways, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to chat with me about this week's game. But before we get to that, I'd love to, I guess, just share your story. Um, you work for Manif Matthew Berry's Fantasy Life. Your illustrations are incredible. I've seen so many. I always hype you up when I see them, especially when they're 49ers players. <laughs> um, so I'm a huge fan and I want to kind of dive into your journey uh, to where you are at today. So when did you actually start working for Fantasy Life and how did you kind of come to be there? Sure. Yeah. Well, I started working, working for Fantasy Life last summer, um, got to connect with them and uh, get the opportunity to maybe do some some illustrations for them. And those went over very well. So as a result of that, I got brought on uh, part time to continue doing those illustrations as well as some graphic work um, on the back end. Uh, I also got the opportunity to do an amp radio show last year with Elliot Christ, and that was a lot of fun um, getting to work with him. He's, uh, you know, the team over there is immense and incredibly talented from the very top down and Elliot is the CEO there and does an amazing job and his takes are always brilliant so I felt like just getting to record with him for a season made me a better analyst just um, with all of the, his knowledge that he brought to the table um, everything everyone on the team is extremely active on our discord too so getting to see people get l real time analysis through the discord through the chat um, has been a lot of fun too so just 
there's there's so many players on this team it's it's insane just to be a part of it and uh to get to all the witness all the content get to read everything that everyone's doing um it's been a lot of fun so before that um before i got lucky enough to be a part of fantasy life i was with dr roto and then before that i was with another site um called fantasy focused and i had my uh, fantasy debate show with my co-host Derek tate who's now at pfn so very excited for him he's uh got a new big gig over there and I've been in the fantasy space, I think about seven years now. And to, wow. to some extent, whether it's writing or doing podcasting and doing little bits here and there. And now I'm getting to bring my personal trade, which I've been an artist since I was a kid uh, and have a degree in illustration and my BFA in that. And it's all full circle now. So it's now it's just, I brought my art into it with my love of football and I'm getting to do all of the things that I love to do all at the same time. So it's, it's an overwhelming gift, but it's, it's very fun. And so that kind of gets to my next question. What inspired you to become an illustrator in the first place? I guess you said that you started doing it when you were little, but um, looking specifically at graphic design and all that, what kind of nudged you that way? Um, I think illustration more so than just specifically drawing and painting, at least for me, illustration is really about storytelling. And that's also something that I find I love most also about podcasting. I love telling stories and hearing people's stories. And um, as an artist and as a graphic designer, what you're asked to do most days is create what people are imagining in their heads. And you have to kind of be a bit of a mind reader. And as a creative person, you have to problem solve to figure out what people are trying to achieve, whether it's graphically or um, just to, oh, I really want a picture to look like this. And then being able to draw that is a fun challenge for me. And um, I've been very lucky to be blessed with an artistic gift that I've gotten to, you know, use over the years and refine and all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know, I've just been doing it for so long. It's kind of one of those skills that I don't even think of necessarily as a skill anymore, just because I do it so much. It's just what I am. Like I have become this. So <laughs> it, it's hard to say like, well, how do you do that? It's like, I just, I just do it now. I don't, <laughs> I don't, it doesn't, it, it's just like breathing. It's just like playing fantasy. It's just like Second anything nature. else. It's like, yeah, yeah I just, I, I'm just used to doing it. And I also, you know, it's, it brings me great joy to make things. So mm -hmm. I, and not only in just drawing, but like I love to do DIY projects around the house and, you know, build stuff. And I did sculpture for a time. Like I just if there's a hobby out there, I've probably tried it just because <laughs> I'm a very um, extroverted person. I just like to be busy. So I'm just like, I wonder if I can do that. I'm going to go try and then I'll just go do it. So like if you can think of any hobby, I likely have the starter kit for that hobby and it's somewhere in my house. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And then I guess like all of the, the the designs that you've created for Fantasy Life, do you have one that kind of sticks out as your favorite? Um, I liked all of them are precious to me for different reasons. But one that I had a lot of fun doing was I did a drawing of Tom Brady as a uh, part of the last season when, you know, he was going through a bit of a, a rough patch. <laughs> and I drew him with um, kind of like an Avengers type mode where he had all of his rings and they were like infinity stones that were just breaking and rupturing around his hand. And then I had him kind of like doing the the snap fade to dust on one side. That was a, lot, a really fun one because I was like, oh, this is tying in a couple things that I really enjoy. So that was a fun little challenge that I did. That's sick. I'll have to look that one up. And then I guess um, kind of on the same lines, is there a specific design that popped off a bit on social media that maybe you're like, whoa, like I didn't think that would do so well? Um, Not off the top of my head. The ones, I mean, whenever I did the time lapse videos of me drawing, those all did really well. I guess I was surprised that people wanted to see that side of just yeah. like the little bit of the behind the scenes and it's hard too because I'm, I'm drawing on an ipad so trying to get the setup just right to see the right angles <laughs> that i'm doing everything it was very uncomfortable so even like when right. i set it up to record i was like all right we gotta roll out the shoulders this is this is gonna be a tough <laughs> one but um just because you have to get in such a weird position to be comfortable drawing inherently so yeah I was really surprised that I got so many people saying like, oh my God, that time-lapse was cool. And I was like, it's just a time-lapse. It's just it, like, to, I still, I guess to me, cause I just, again, I'm so used to drawing. I'm like, it's not that impressive to me, but yeah. I was really happy that people got to enjoy and see some of the process um, of those things coming to life. So I got a lot of really good feedback about that. 
Yeah, I was going to say, that's just it. People nowadays, they want to watch how everything's done start to finish, right? And yeah, I guess they do. Either for themselves or, you know, just to kind of hype people up and watch what they do in their own craft at school. I, I can appreciate that. Um, and then I guess like looking just at the fantasy football community in general, um, what do you love most about being a part of it? Um, I think I love most the community in uh that it is a true community, that everyone really communicates and is very open and very quick to lift each other up when they're going through different things or quick mm -hmm. to provide advice um, for those that are seeking it. Uh, I think it's a space that there is a lot of opportunity for people to jump in and, you know, try their hand at different things. And, you know, I, I really like to encourage those that are thinking about maybe starting a podcast, whether it's fantasy football or not, or thinking about starting a channel or posting anything like I try and encourage them just to start doing it because there is going to be a community of people that are going to embrace you and lift you up and encourage you to keep going and that's what fantasy has done for me and that's what the fantasy community has done for me and I, I couldn't be more grateful for it I love that and you know what just kind of touching on that with my own story like I obviously came into this community more as a 49ers fan that's how I kind of built my brand on social media and everything and just some situations like were a little hard on me in the past with you know you you build up a certain amount of followers and with that you get some not so great people and it took a, a, a toll on my mentals for a little bit and I took a little bit of a break just a, a breather from the 49er side of things and then ended up going more towards the fantasy football stuff and and because I've been you know, playing fantasy football since 2011 when my brother-in-law got me into it and everything. Back then I had no idea what I was doing. It was like Aaron Rodgers or bust for me. <laughs> and um, ever since then, like I just kind of found that the community is is incredibly uplifting and was able to pick me up in, you know, after a couple downfalls that I had online and everything. And, and even just being able to speak to you today is it's so great. So yeah, the community is amazing. And just even so you, I saw that you were in Vegas for the women of fantasy football draft, which looked absolutely amazing. So um, fun. I'm all about like all the women supporting women, especially in this kind of industry. Can you just uh, talk a bit about that experience for those of the, um, those who are watching and they don't know what it's about? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Full Time Fantasy reached out and uh, wanted to have an all women draft over there. And I was you know, grateful that they uh, asked for me to be a part of it. Um, it was a really fun event. So they, they set it up really great. We got to draft in, I think it was like the owner's suite where it's like a conference room type of deal, which was super cool. Amazing view because you're literally at the penthouse on the top yeah. and uh, got to draft with some incredible women, including Jen Piacenti over at Sports Illustrated and Lindsay Rhodes over at Sirius XM, um, amongst many others that were amazing women to all be there. Steffi Smalls was over there. Um, Kelly Singh uh, drafted via Zoom because uh, she had some other stuff, uh, personal stuff going on. So it was great that she was able to zoom in at the time um and yeah a lot of other amazing uh women in um media and radio and tv over in in vegas and nearby as well were there and it was just a lot of fun it was a single quarterback format i want to say it was 12 teams and i was drafting from i think it was the eight spot okay. I, yeah i think i was drafting from the eight and it was three wide receivers two running backs and i think three flex Ooh, looking nice. at, I'm looking at my lineup right now. So wait, <laughs> uh, yeah, three wide receivers, two flex, uh, tight end, kicker, and defense. And of course, I went kicker defense at the end because yeah. I'm gonna stay true to my advice. I'm always gonna go those last. <laughs> but because it was three wide receivers deep in the PPR format, it was a little not. I wouldn't say a little bit of a challenge, but it's just different the way I went about it than I normally do. Again, also because it was always a single quarterback. Um, I've been doing so much two quarterback stuff that it's. It's an adjustment yeah <laughs> when you're used to doing two qb so often you're like everyone go for quarterback like oh wait i can wait and it's gonna be fine like, <laughs> yeah you just, you just inherently kind of forget a little bit and you're like ah oh, don't want to go too early so i was really happy with um how everything shook out for me there amazing who did you get first by the way well it's it's not aging well but i took travis kelsey first oh shit. yeah i did that in a i know too and I don't know what they're saying. Did they say if he's going to play so yet? They, they said the ACL is intact, but there's going to be oh. more scans tomorrow. So, you know, okay. praise who we praise and say at least the ACL is intact. <laughs> they're swelling, which if they're swelling, that means there's some sort of something going on there and they've got to do additional scans. Eesh. So what I'm trying to think of is, will I would I be happier 
with Kelsey not playing week one and having him the rest of the season? Or am I really going to be the selfish fantasy footballer and say, no, get your ass out there. I need you to get me some points. Like, no, I drafted my teams to have insurance. I've got a lot of different options for myself if I have to pivot. So in this league, even though I took Travis Kelsey, I have Michael Mayer from the nice. Raiders. And I feel like that's a great option for a deep league like this, where there were no other second tight ends higher than that, that I could take. Everyone else ended up taking them. So th if this was the best option for me. I'm pretty happy about it yeah. at Denver. You know, Jimmy G is gonna have to throw the ball quite a bit and he's oh gonna God. love those short <laughs> passes and someone like Michael Mayer of big target is gonna be a good option for him so I'm okay with having to pivot to that for the week if I need to yeah. um in another league that I have Kelsey in I also have Sam Laporta so that's a good option for me too for this week um again even though they're playing against each other on Thursday. I think that Laporta is going to be a really good option for Goff. I think that um, the Lions defense, Lions offense is going to take another step forward this season. And I could see him being a big um, outlet for them. Cause you know, without Hawkinson there, someone's got to step up. And besides Amon Ross St. Brown, you know, there's, it's not that they're missing so many, but they're, they're wanting for some targets. And I think that he could be a great one for them. Yeah, well said. Okay, so now shifting over to game week, because obviously that's why I have you on here in the first place. Um, it does, I did some research clearly, and it says that you're from Long Beach, California, and yet you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. You've got your gear on and everything. I how know. exactly did that happen? Can you tell people how you became a fan? Yes, um, I get this a lot. And even when people meet me, they're like, they always assume that I'm from the East Coast, which is kind of funny that I'm like, no, born and raised Southern California. But um, my parents are not from here. My dad is from England and my mom is from Colombia. They both Ooh. moved to LA back in the early 80s. And um, when they moved out here, they met out here. Um, and then magically, it, I became uh, a thing. And then... <laughs> My my dad's from England again, like I said, and he didn't know anything about American football. So through a friend of his out here um, who ended up uh, being my godfather, um, uh, they, uh, he, they were watching a game. Uh, I think it was Raiders Steelers and he picked the Steelers to win and um, they did. So he was like, all right, that's gonna be my team. They were similar colors to uh, his home football uh, soccer club. And he was like, all right, that's going to be my team. And so since the 80s, not a bad time to join the, day, uh, the Steelers train, by the way. Um, yeah. He was a fan. So I was born and raised a Steelers fan as a result. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. I had no idea yeah. that your parents were from different places like that. That's so cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very random mix. But, um, I have, you been, have you been yeah. to London? Or yeah, like, I've, um, yeah, I've been to England. Columbia too? Been to England, been to Columbia a lot. I've had a passport since I was a baby. So oh, um, amazing. Definitely traveled a lot. That's so cool. Okay. And then I guess uh, you, I'm sure you've been to a game. You must have. So the only Steelers game I've been to, which sounds terrible, was <laughs> when they played the Chargers at StubHub Arena. So this was pre SoFi oh, being built. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you're familiar with LA stadiums, but StubHub is a soccer stadium. So it's yeah. very small. And it was so much fun because I got seats like 10 rows up in the corner, but it felt like I was on the field because of the way those stadiums are built different because soccer is yeah. just a bit wider set. It was such a fun game. I went with my dad. We had a blast. Oh. Um, Steelers won. It was when uh, Ben was hurt and we won with Duck Hodges. Like it was like oh a, one of those random <laughs> crazy games. And because the Chargers were just playing so horribly, someone up in um, the media stands or something must have just been messing with them. And they started playing Renegade over the sound system. Oh, oh the yes. terrible towels were everywhere the whole stadium looked black and yellow i was like i didn't know i was showing up to a home game in la but this is amazing so it was it was a great experience um i did get to go visit the stadium earlier this summer actually just last month and that was a lot of fun i got to you can pay ten dollars and do a stadium tour and you get to walk down to the grass and then go to the locker rooms i was like how is what? this only ten dollars it's insanely cheap I'm like how i don't understand it was that's so amazing great. it was great like the was it $10 or 20? I don't, I don't remember, but uh, I think it was 20. 
I don't remember, but it was so, still such a good deal to go to go yeah. on tour that way. I and pay you that. Run, like you can't run onto the field, like to the middle. You, like you can't get past the lines, but like you can still stand on the turf, and it's still like yeah. so powerful. You just feel it. Yeah. Oh my you can god. Feel I love the that. energy. Apparently, day of games that you can also do the tour as well, but it's like obviously a different oh, price because it's the same day, and so it's a, it's a bit more expensive. But like a Dude, field pass day of. 110 percent. i would pay that again and again yeah. and again just to keep going because once you get you know the energy of your team surrounding you i think you can understand it's just like it just it's like you're rebaptized in your fandom like i'm just like a high i'm born again steelers like for, fan forever <laughs> oh i love that so much yeah i'd love to do that for levi's i mean candlestick was way more iconic when i started following the niners they had candlestick park and like obviously that stadium was just it was falling apart, but I mean, it, it was still so amazing. There was so much history there, which was cool. But like Levi's was also, it's pretty badass. I know a lot of people are like, oh, we need a new stadium, but I, I take what I can get. Honestly, I grew up in sure. Canada. We don't, we have CFL, which is different. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to shit on the CFL, but it's different, um, <laughs> you know? And so being able to have, being able to go to a stadium and have a team that like, you know, where you're from, you get to go and support them. I can't even imagine what that feels like. I'm very jealous of people that have that. Oh, I know. I'm I'm grateful now that, you know, uh, in, in LA, we have got SoFi now. I've got to go there once for um, a Rams playoff game, and that was insanely fun. Um, yeah. Also, Steelers are playing the Rams this year, so I'm crossing Hell my fingers yeah. that I get to go to that game. My my boss has season tickets to the Rams, so I'm like, hey, I don't ask for you a lot of things. Go. Can I can I go? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Please. I'm hoping you do. You have to take lots of pictures. Um, oh my God, yeah. Okay. And then I guess looking at the team overall and in general, if you could sit and have a beer with somebody, anybody that's like current, former, was whatever, doesn't matter from your team, who would it be? I mean, top of my list, I've been asked a similar version of this question before is, is Mike Tomlin. Like I, if I could just oh. pick his brain for like 10 minutes, it would be a blessing. I mean, that man has dealt with so many different things over the years and still kept our team in the wins column. He's just, I mean, how he hasn't gotten coach of the year, I don't understand. Maybe it's this never. year because He's I never do had it. Never. And Oof. I mean, I'm, I hope that I'm, correct in that I mean, honestly it wouldn't be mine if I'm wrong in that but I'm pretty sure he's never been made coach of the year and he absolutely deserves it because he's mm -hmm. been able to put together so much with so little and I think this year in particular the Steelers should be exciting extremely fun to watch because one we've got year two Kenny Pickett we've worked out a lot of the kinks we've worked out a lot of the kinks on offense we've addressed some of the offensive line issues you know the defense is healthy I think there's nothing but up for us in terms of trying to go after our division, which in my opinion is one of the toughest divisions in the league. I mean, yeah. the way the Bengals have been absolutely slaying it. The Ravens are always in there. Browns are just the Browns. I, don't know what I'm <laughs> was going to say there's one that doesn't really belong, but it's fine. <laughs> just leave that on the side over there. Yeah. Um, but you no, know, but, but all seriousness, I do think we have a lot to look forward to this year and a lot of people are already discounting us. And that's why people are getting Deontay Johnson so late in drafts and why you can still pick up Jalen Warren and he's still available. Like, I think there's a lot of good parts and good things going for us. So I'm excited to see, you know, how my boys do this weekend. Although, if we get this back to the task at hand, which is talking about this matchup, it's not an easy first game for us. So you guys are going to make it tough for sure. Yeah. Okay. So 49ers week, obviously, like as of right now, I just looked, we were talking about it before we started recording. Nick Bosa has not signed yet. Just kidding. Just he kidding. actually yeah, signed, signed on, on September 6th, right after I recorded this $170 million, baby. Let's go. Like no. it's, it's kind of one of those things that we're all just sitting here waiting for him to sign this massive contract ascension. The faithful, faithful worldwide are like, you know, about to push the panic button. I am. I'm very optimistic when it comes to things. I'm always trying to look for like, you know, the silver lining. So then people are like, okay, we've got some of the fan base that wants to just wave the white flag already and be like, oh, we're done. If we don't have Bosa, we're done. We're done. He's getting traded. Like there's all this crazy talk, right? Yeah. Um, he's obviously one of the best, I mean, I'd argue the best defensive ends in NFL. He's the reigning defensive player of the year, obviously. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot, obviously him and his dad. I've heard that his dad and the Bosa's in general, they fight for what they want, especially when they feel they deserve it. He deserved it this past year. He does deserve it going into the season. Um, and he wants to be one of the highest paid players at this position. He actually wants to be the highest non-quarterback I've read. 
Um, so he's been holding out and he's kind of, you know, he's holding all of our hearts in his hand. And I, I wanted to draw a bit of a conclusion. This is something I got kind of shit on for saying online because people are like, it's different. It's different. And of course, yes, it's different. But back in 2021, obviously, you know this all too well. TJ Watt had a similar situation where he kind of was holding out as well. He was going to sign his big contract, ended up signing $112 million. Um, and then that same week against the Buffalo Bills, I guess it was two days before the game, he ends up dominating. He had like two quarterback sacks, five quarterback hits, um, a forced fumble, all this crazy shit going on. The Steelers won by 23-16, um, mm-hmm. which is insane. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, this gives me a bit of hope. This makes me think, okay, if, if – Nick Bosa gets his deal done, even today, tomorrow, let's say. Will he get on the field? Will he play? I don't know. We'll see. A lot of people are like, it's not going to happen. He's not playing week one. And if he doesn't play week one, same kind of vote of what you said, as long as, you know, with Kelsey, as long as he gets out there eventually, we're going to be just fine. But, like, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I'm still freaking out a little bit. So what do you think the odds are that we see something similar, I guess, to what Nick – or with Nick Bosa that you saw with TJ Watt? Well, I mean, you know – Different organizations have different ways of handling these types of hold in, hold out situations. And I think you just kind of have to look to see historically what they have done for other players. Have they taken care of other guys in the past? And, you know, when it, I can only speak to my Steelers in those situations, but the Steelers have definitely paid where they need to for value and for talent. And for players that are about the organization and about the team first. So, I knew we were going to get a deal done with someone like TJ Watt because he's been such a team first kind of a guy. And he's just been very public about, you know, a love of the organization, wanting to work with the organization. He was really strategic, I think, in not taking to social media and going out there and saying, oh, you know, I haven't gotten my deal yet. Where, where's the money at? You know, show me the money, nothing like that. Not to say that any player shouldn't do that. I think every player deserves to be paid, but I think it goes back to what the communication level is with the players in the organization itself. And when you start to see a lot of those things and players feeling like they need to be vocal, to me, it just shows that there's a lack of communication from the top down and that's not the player's fault. That's the organization's fault first and foremost. So when it comes to (laughs) Bosa, I do believe they're going to pay him. I think that you can't have a young, young talent like that and not pay them, especially with what they bring to the table. Of course, because I'm playing you guys, I'm hoping that they decide to wait a week (laughs) and then do the deal. But in all likelihood, I can imagine the deal getting done in time for him to get with the team on Sunday. And I think the difference, too, like um, I believe he's in a holdout, so he hasn't been in the facility, um, which, of course, can be a bit of a detriment. So is he on a bit of a pitch count because he hasn't been practicing with the team looking at him? just because looking at him, because I'm like, God, you can't not. Uh, He (laughs) looks like he's in good football shape and he should be fine to play, but maybe they don't put him in 100% of the reps. Maybe they hold him back a little bit. So that might be the only thing. But honestly, I think that when you look at a player like that, you can't not pay him. And it would look really bad on the Niners organization after they just absolutely fumbled the Trey Lance situation. Yeah and lost out on that they're not going to want to lose out on someone like bosa who is generational at the position who can bring them dominance for the next several years um as long as he of course stays healthy i think that they'll get the deal done i i do i really believe they get it done um also just because it would be my luck that i do have to face bosa week one so (laughs) i think it's really just like this is more for you guys this is more against me it's gonna happen um Uh, yeah, the the Niners can't afford to lose face completely in the eyes of the fans and not sign someone like Bosa. That's the thing. I feel like we're holding on by a thread right now. And like if Shani and Lynch don't get this done, I mean, the, a lot of fans are very vocal. You have social media now. Obviously, it's different than it used to be in the past where negotiations would go on behind closed doors and people didn't really have a say. And I feel like the fandom feels like we have a say right now. And it's just been. Oh, sure. I mean, (laughs) they're your team. All every fan feels like we own part of the team. Every, every hat, every Jersey, every single little thing that we have, we feel like we own a part of this. And so we get a say, so I totally understand where this comes from, but you know, at the end of the day, 
this is their jobs to make sure that they can do the job and they're only going to be able to do that because of us. So, you know, I want always as a fan to be emphatic, but I don't want to be that fan that is now saying bad things about my organization exactly. because it's like, you just have to respect the process and respect too. also like, it depends on your team that you follow. I'm sure that there's other people that are fans of other teams that are like, they don't care about us. And I'm like, yeah, probably not. But I mean, <laughs> I'm just in a situation where I'm like, no, I know, I know the Steelers, what they want to do for their players. And I'd have to trust that also for, for the Niners, they're going to get the deal done. They've done other deals in the past that are, can be lucrative, that they can do what they need to do to get the guy. They went out of their way to go and get Christian McCaffrey. They're going to go yeah. out of their way to yeah, shore out these other, other big, big positions. So I think it'll, I think it'll be all right. Hell yeah. I agree. Okay. So I guess looking at the game itself, you guys are at home. I think it's, well, I still think of it as Heinz field, by the way. I don't know. But I, I, I have a shirt that said Acrisher. It's called Acrisher uh, Stadium. I have a shirt that says I'm still calling it Heinz field. So I nice. agree with you. Okay, yeah. So Heinz Field, what do what can we expect from the Steelers in this one? Obviously, you guys have that home field advantage, but give let's just pretend like Nick Bosa will be in there. Let's yes. just say everybody's on the field. Let's say everyone's on the field. I think that this is going to be a really tough matchup on both sides of the ball because we have great defenses on either side. I know a lot of people would come at me and be like, the Niners defense is better. Sure, but you can't say that the Steelers is just absolute trash. We're amazing as well. We've got a lot of different weapons that are going to make things tough for Brock Purdy. And this is another fun thing. We've got two very young quarterbacks in this. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got year two of both of these guys. I mean, I don't know that we were sitting here last year thinking that this is what we were looking at. I know that you guys, I were, wasn't. <laughs> you didn't even know who Brock Purdy was on your team at this point, likely. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a really interesting game just in terms of you've got their youth and they're going to have to answer quickly. And by that, I mean, there's going to be a lot of very quick passes, quick dump offs. I don't know if the running game is going to get all that it needs to. And I just mean that with like a little asterisk just because I feel like both fronts are going to be very aggressive right out the mm -hmm. gate and cause a lot of big, uh, at least short dink and dunks for both sides. So yeah. I think that there could be some later running in terms of, you know, the front gets tired and you have to air, like change up the scheme a little bit. So am I benching any running backs in this one? No. If I drafted Najee Harris, I'm starting him. If I drafted Jalen Warren, to me, as a RB two week one, I like to wait and see with that position. So I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. flexing him unless I have no better options. Um, and then on the Niners side of the ball, I'm starting all my guys. So if I drafted Debo, if I drafted Brandon Ayuk, um, if I drafted CMC, obviously I'm, everyone's getting the start. Um, I did not take a lot of Kittle this year because I feel like you guys have so Damn. many mouths to feed. Yeah, I, He's just not going to get the touchdowns. You guys are going to need him to block this weekend a lot yeah. in order to open up Christian McCaffrey, open things up um, for Debo. I just, I'm really nervous about him being a bit of a bust this season because there's so many mouths to feed and he's just so good at blocking. He's just so yeah. effective. I, I mean, unlike other tight ends where I can be like, oh, well, maybe he's going to get a blocking play or different things. No, he's he's just so talented at that as well as everything else. The athleticism is unmatched. But you guys just have so many other weapons. It's hard for me to see him getting the touchdowns and the catches to warrant that high draft position. Of course, I say all of this and I can imagine him going off for like two <laughs> touchdowns and like on like four catches for like 95 yards or something stupid. But yeah, I'm just saying I can't see it right now, at least in the way that this uh, game's scheming out. I see a lot of the experts are really pushing for like a 17-21, 20-21, not a high scoring game for this one. I think it's going to be because of these defenses. I think it's going to be right. kind of one of those low close games. It will definitely be a battle of the D. That's kind of what I was thinking too. And yeah, I mean, you guys have TJ Watt, like I was talking about before. How do you think Brock Purdy specifically will fare against somebody like him? I mean, we saw a lot of really great veteran level patience from Purdy last year as we were going towards the postseason. He really kept his cool under pressure. And I think that he's going to have to kind of lean into that so he doesn't get um, scared off by TJ. Although I'm, of course, hoping that my guy gets to your guy. I'm sorry. I'm just being <laughs> honest. I mean, I want him to get him at least once, like crying out loud. But um, no, he's going to have to 
uh, be really quick off the pass, but that's why it's great that he has the weapons that he does around him. The reason why he can be so successful is because he's got Christian McCaffrey who he can, you know, pass it off to give a quick pass to, and he can be just off to the races. Same with Debo. And then he's got Brandon Ayuk just flying up the side, just constant, He's got to have an amazing metabolism because to <laughs> run as fast as Ayuk does over and over and over again, I wonder what that guy eats. I just wonder what some of Man. these players, I mean, just to keep the caloric intake high, to keep that level of speed constant, I'm just always so impressed. So I feel like he's going to have so many options. He's just going to have to make very quick decisions. And right. as long as he doesn't hesitate or second guess himself, and allow that extra second pause because if he waits one second long, TJ is going to have his arms around him, um, yeah. and he's going to have to make sure that he's making smart decisions with those passes because obviously we've got great guys at the backfield as well. Mink is always known to grab a pick or two, so mm -hmm. I think that he's going to get a lot of big coverage. Um, it's going to be it's going to be tough for him, but I think that as long as he can lean into you know his. Uh, his swag that he had last year. There's so many other sayings I could have said there, but I don't know what you want to go with here on your podcast. There's a lot of isms that went with Brock Purdy and his, um, Beastie uh, B is the nickname. If oh, anybody, he, yeah. Yeah. He had, a, he had a lot of them. They were great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, he's just gonna have to lean in back into that. And, you know, week one is always going to be tough every team because preseason is a little bit different than regular, obviously. And this is everyone getting the ones and this, counts so um we'll see how it starts off i could imagine there might be some fumbles on either side of the ball just to get used to it off the off the off the cuff but you know yeah. someone's gonna probably throw a pick i'm hoping it's not kenny pickett which is because it rhymes with his name so damn well yeah. i hope it doesn't happen <laughs> but um your guys's defense is, is really good so we're gonna have to keep it clean are we going over or under two sacks for what uh over under two for this weekend i'm gonna want to i gotta it's week one i want to go the over but nice. if i was betting money i'd probably go under okay but right. my heart I'm says over. <laughs> well you know our offensive line like this is something that if i'm going to look at the the niners and one of our weaknesses is definitely the offensive line we have trent williams we have some depth there as well like but i just yeah, I'm still a little sketchy with the offensive line. In And I know I'm going to mention this, and I'm talking about practice, but um, obviously in training camp, there were a lot of interceptions going on with Brock Purdy and a lot of people that like are not the biggest fan of him and are more, you know, they were more the Trey Lance stands. They're like, Brock Purdy's going to throw like seven interceptions in this game. So I hope not. I mean, for me, I hope not for you. That might be a nice thing, but... <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I think... Uh... Seven is high. Seven is very high. People are crazy. <laughs> I, if Brock that's Purdy like Baker throws, Mayfield numbers, man. Yeah, that's those are getting up there. Um, if he throws one interception, I would not be shocked. Um, if he threw, if he threw three, I would be shook. But like one, I expect, and I honestly expect at least one from Pickett as well, just because it's, it's the nature of the beast. Get him out early, yeah. you know. But I just think, yeah, I. I, I think seven's way too high. I think one is reasonable. I don't think that he, I honestly don't think he throws two. No, okay, good. Nice. Yeah. Looking at the whole game in general, what are your three keys to the game for the Steelers to get the dub? To get the dub, Pickett's going to have to get the ball out of his hands quickly. He's going to have to utilize, um, he's going to have to utilize both Pickens and Deontay Johnson um, as early and often as he can. And the quicker that he can get them into the scheme, it's going to help open things up for Najee just in terms of drawing coverage and just to open up the field for him. Um, and, you know, I feel like I'm betting on a Pat Fryermuth touchdown in this one because he's been such a safety blanket for him this past year. I think that we see a lot more of the same of this. And just with the way that the way that the Niners are going to likely cover uh, Najee and Johnson and Pickens and try and get them out of the mix, I think that Fryermuth is going to be a bit of a safety net for them there. So I can, um, if I had to guess the first uh, first touchdown, it would be Pat Fryermuth. Um, I'm probably like a 20 yard touchdown, nothing big, but still going to be something that if you got him late in fantasy drafts, you'll be happy that you did. Nice. Um, okay. And then this is something, so I, 
I don't follow much about the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's why I'm so happy to have you on because like you obviously know your shit and like this is great. One of my good friends from Vancouver, he's a massive Pittsburgh fan and like, you know, me and him banter back and forth. I'm going to have a FaceTime with him after the game this weekend. But when it comes to the actual team, I don't know much about the strengths and weaknesses. I'm not going to lie. I did, however, read a funny little something that Kenny Pickett has extremely small hands. So I have to know, does this hinder him at all? No. They're not extremely <laughs> small. And I looked this up too, because I said it, saw it in your notes. And I'm like, they're not that small. They are three eighths of an inch smaller than Joe Burrow's hands. I will okay. say that. So Joe Burrow had nine inch hands and Kenny Pickett <laughs> has eight and five eighths. Like, come on guys. That's like, I mean, guys should not be worried about that. Like that's, <laughs> come on, that's, yeah. that's round up all you guys that are saying that you're six foot and you're actually five ten. come on, like really let's, let's not worry about this. And I think that we all agree that Joe Burrow's hands are just fine. I think that it all just depends on the quarterback wielding them and their confidence level and their coach. And I have the most faith in my coach. Um, I would make him my emergency contact. It would probably offend my parents, but I love him that much. So <laughs> I have all my faith that uh, Tomlin knows exactly what he's doing with Kenny Pickett. And um, yeah, he'll be just fine. Not worried about his small hands. They are perfectly fine. They're perfectly They're good. Hands. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. I mean, <laughs> everybody counts every little bit, right? Like size. Every little matter, bit. But yeah. Um, so obviously. <laughs> okay. Now, obviously looking at like the team in general, um, who is somebody that you believe will surprise us this season that we should be keeping an eye on? Um, I think Deontay Johnson is going to have a positive touchdown regression in that obviously he had none last year and he's going to have to break that this year. And he, he will, he absolutely will. I think he's going to end up hitting that thousand yards and he's going to end up breaking those touchdowns as well. Could be in this game. Um, but it's just the volume that I know the Steelers organization has historically had and how they treat their receivers it's going to be there. And so I think that he's going to be a steal of a lot of people's drafts um, for that reason. Similar for Pat Fryermuth, I think where you're getting him is a great value for someone that's going to be such a security blanket throughout the season. And the Steelers have always utilized the tight end position and Fryermuth has been fantastic for them for that. Um, two quarterback format. I don't know that I would super lean on Kenny Pickett just because he doesn't have any rushing upside for you. I like other players instead. Um, but yeah, I think Deontay and, and Pat are just going to be fantastic for a lot of people's fantasy drafts. I do have George Pickens in a couple leagues as well. Definitely not ignoring him. But the fact that they're drafted so close together right now and some people are taking Pickens ahead of Johnson, I think is a bit I of a mess. which I right. think. Guys, the depth hurt hasn't changed. Until someone gets hurt, you have to still go by the book. Wide receiver one is Deontay Johnson. He is the number one. He is the veteran. He's getting all the looks. Seconds are going to go to George Pickens and everything else, obviously, to Pat Firemuth. Um, But I just think that people are – like, the scale has dipped too far, and I'm seeing so many people take Pickens ahead of Johnson. I'm like, guys – like, what are we doing? Why do you think that is? Is that because of some of his crazy catches that he's had? I think it has to do with, that? yeah. I mean, obviously the viral catches are also huge. Um, people also like the young, you know, rookies, the shiny toy. And that's what Pickens is. And that's why I love him. I mean, he's such an amazing talent. He's so athletic. Um, the catches that he makes are absolutely insane. And you love those things. But it's kind of similar to how I, I kind of view DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett historically. Yeah. Like, obviously, the athleticism of DK Metcalf is insane. And he's unparalleled. I'm not saying that Pickens is Metcalf. I'm just saying in a little vacuum here. You know, you can't discount that. But you also can't forget about Tyler Lockett, who's been so consistent, getting so many yards over the past forever years that you just can't ignore them. So it's kind of that conversation in my mind of like, which would you rather? And mm. you're going to have this big play upside of Pickens, sure. But do I want to have a good floor, a steady floor? I feel like you're going to get that with someone like Johnson. You're going to get that with someone like Lockett. You're going to get the big plays. There's still going to be points to be had, but what do you feel most safe with? I like some security. Yeah. So I've been taking Johnson where I can. Of course, security. Very well it's all, it's, all, okay. it's all we want. So, you know, I was going to ask you your starts and sits for the week, but we've kind of covered all that. So that's amazing. Um, this is my last question. You've been amazing so far and I've taken up too much of your time. I feel bad, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like 7 a.m. for me. I've been, yeah. You poor thing. Very, very weird flex over here, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yes. I mean, <laughs> you're you in Italy. That's amazing. 
I was going to say, and like, I have a daughter, I'm, she's about six months old on Sunday, actually. So kicking off the season, I mean, I was six months old, which is amazing. Um, so I guess this is my last question. It's something that, you know, I'm going to try and end my show with each week. Cause I'm all about like heartwarming content and everything. And, um, you know, I've had some doubt, like I've, I've talked about this before on other shows I've done and everything. I've had doubt from people in my past that have said, you know, you're, you're a female, you can't talk about sports the same way a male could. Um, and, you know, to somebody like myself or even, you know, my daughter growing up in a very male dominated industry, especially like the fantasy football one, what's a piece of advice that you'd give to somebody, um, you know, you know, a young female that's maybe hoping to be a badass woman in the sports scene someday? Sure. Um, I think, you know, kind of similar to my other advice, just get out there and start making content. Um, there's always going to be people that are going to doubt you, whether they're other men, other women, um, in any field that you want to try and go out for. I mean, everything is competitive. If if there's a passion for it and if there's an, a need for it, it's going to be competitive. So I would say don't be scared of the competition. Use it to motivate you to get better. Mm. Because the only way that we get better is to have trials and tribulations. And if you didn't have that, you wouldn't be grateful for the result at the end of the journey. So just look at those things that are going to cause adversity, those things that are going to stand in your way. Just be thankful to have that to challenge you. Thank you for challenging me to be better. Thank you for questioning me. Um, I want to get better. I want to keep proving myself. And that's how I'm going to be better in anything that I do, you know, whether it be sports, whether it be in um, sports media, whether it be, you know, just in college going for a doctorate's level degree, there's going to be people that are going to doubt you that are going to challenge you and just appreciate the challenge is people asking you to try harder, people asking you to be better, and you can be better. There's always another level that you can take it to. Um, and just, yeah, embrace the challenge that that creates for you, because it's going to feel so much sweeter when you get to that next level. And you can look back and be like, look at all of those hurdles I jumped. And, yeah. you know, there will be people along the way to help you. Maybe there aren't as much, but hopefully there are. And you get to look back and see, like, I got through that with what I with with the hand that I was dealt. And you're going to inspire so many people on your journey as well. So um, always so just, you know, always ask for help. Don't be scared of asking for help. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, hopefully that's. It's a lot of very random advice all in a nutshell, but yeah. No, but uh, let it motivate you. I love that. That's, yeah. I mean, a lot of people can take what they've been through and either they let it weigh them down or they take it and they let it fire them to be better. Right. And I think you got to build on that fire that's in you just to get to where you got to go. So Sam, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, especially for being my first, first guest here and um, good luck to your Steelers this weekend. I'm so excited to see all your illustrations and everything you do over at fantasy life. So just before we get off here, where can everybody find you on socials? Absolutely. Thank you again so much for having me. I feel so honored to be your first guest. And I appreciate you wanting the best for my Steelers. I would, I want the best for your Niners as well. I'm going to be watching the game with a, a diehard Niners uh, friend of mine. So I know that we'll nice. be going back and forth all weekend. But um, no, thank you again for having me. And uh, if you guys want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at Samantha R. Holt and on Instagram at Sam underscore awesome. And make sure you head over to fantasylife.com and sign up for the newsletter. It is completely free and full of amazing content for you daily and the site has been updated it is brand spanking new and there are so many amazing tools to help you throughout the season with your start sits if you've got a couple drafts still going make sure you check it out um there's so much amazing content for us over there as well as brand new section for betting and betting life and all that good stuff so if you have some good bets you want to make over there um, there's a lot of good content for you too Amazing. So thank you everyone for watching my very first episode of Crystal Ball. And next week, I've got a dude who covers the LA Rams. Obviously, we've got Rams week next week. We're going to get to that though. Um, and I, he's even gone to bat for one of our beloved third round picks who we talked about today a little bit. Sad Trey Lance. He no longer is with us. He's with the evil Dallas Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to miss that show. Thank you guys. We appreciate you being here, sending all the good vibes and fantasy wins to you all this weekend. Peace. Let's go.